Hello everyone, my name is Namir Qureshi and I want to welcome you to Unfolding Destiny where we teach you how to build your life within the context of your true identity. Today we're going to talk about dreams. 1953, Kleitman and Azarinsky discovered REM. REM stands for Rapid Eye Movement. This is a monumental breakthrough. Up until that point, you couldn't really know whether or not someone was dreaming. You just kind of had to ask them whether uh, or not they did after they woke up. And you know, most of us can't even remember our dreams after we wake up. So how reliable is that? Well, what they discovered was that when someone's asleep, they go through these periods of REM and NREM. REM is rapid eye movement and REM is non-rapid eye movement. These are the two different types of sleep. And what you'll discover is that during REM, your eyelids are rapidly blinking, even though your eyes are closed. And so that was the discovery of the physiological indication that someone is dreaming. And if you take that out into the future, you start to look at fetuses and infants. Fetuses are in utero, meaning they're inside the womb. Infants are ex utero, they're outside of the womb. But what you'll notice is that there's still some indications of consciousness and reaction to stimuli while a baby is inside the womb. They've discovered that, not Kleitman and Azarinsky, but in general, it's been discovered that fetuses can still detect pain signals, even olfaction, which is smell. They actually have a predilection towards amniotic fluid. Hearing develops around 26 weeks in, and memory around 20 to 23 weeks in. Now, what does memory mean? I mean, it's not like they're going to remember things like the way you and I remember them. But if you were to play a certain sound over and over again, they start to react to that stimuli. If you overdo it, then they just become used to it, and then they don't react anymore. Uh, but what you'll also notice is that there's REM activity inside babies as well. What's interesting is that their REM fluctuates between every 20 and 40 minutes. You might even notice that certain studies indicate that babies actually have around, well, fetuses inside the womb can go up to 50 REM cycles per day. Let's contrast that with adults who typically go to four to five cycles per night. So going from 50 to four to five, what's going on over here? So let's take a look at some possible reasons for REM, a rapid eye movement. Now, uh, these are all theories and they're still being tested. One thing I want you to know is that with dreams and consciousness and this type of research, it's, it's ongoing. And we're constantly finding new and new, making new theories and finding new evidence. So just kind of hear me out on these uh, three or four different postulates over here. Uh, the first one is memory processing. So one of the possible reasons for REM, like why do we have this rapid eye movement pattern at night? Why, why do we dream? So if you take a look at the work of Jonathan Winson, he talks about integration. He believes that when we dream, we're processing all the stuff that happened to us during the day. And we're trying to integrate within our own psyche the stuff that's most important. To contrast that, you look at the Crick Mitchinson theory of dreaming, and what you'll find is that they say, well, no, dreaming has more to do with erasure, that you want to actually discard the things that you don't need. And that's probably part of the reason why when you wake up, you don't remember most of your dreams. Or if you had a good night's rest and you've slept on a certain problem, you suddenly wake up and you realize it wasn't that big of a problem to begin with, and that maybe you were making a mountain out of a molehill. The second theory is the activation synthesis model, which is highly regarded. It was uh, created by John Hobson and Robert McCarley. McCarley. Now, they deal, what they believe is that REM has to do with the bombardment of electrical signals that weave together data. It's another way of saying integration, but they have a more of a neurobiological basis of their findings with activation synthesis. The third is survival. So I want you to understand that REM is short. These are not long cycles. You might have four to five cycles at night if you get a long full like eight hours of rest. But these periods are very short, very short intervals, some of them lasting only a few minutes long. But there's so much happening within these intervals. I mean, every single time you dream, I mean, every single time you have REM, you are in a dream, 100%. Even if you can't remember it upon waking, it, it doesn't matter. 
The fact that you are in an REM cycle, it means that you are experiencing a dream. As a matter of fact, if you wake up during an REM cycle, you can actually recall very vivid dreams. The reason for this is that when you're asleep, you're, so let me, let me uh, reiterate that. When you're asleep, there's two, there's a NREM, as I mentioned earlier, and REM. Now, when you are in REM, which is rapid eye movement, it's crazy, but your body is fully paralyzed. You can't move your limbs at all. It's, it's complete shutdown, but your mind is completely awake. It's crazy. It's, your brain is more awake when you're asleep in an REM state than you are when you are awake has to do with your beta rhythms. You're actually fully alert. But because you're the alertness of your brain, your body is completely shut down. And the reason for this is that we don't want you to be sleepwalking. We don't want you to be acting out your dreams. That can be pretty dangerous. Sleepwalking is actually um, not something you're supposed to do. It happens because it's just we're, we're human and things like that happen. But in a healthy human being without any real psychoses, who's in a natural, normal dreaming state, their body is paralyzed. But because of that, because of that paralysis, it can get pretty dangerous if you're out in the wilderness. If you're out in a jungle and there's like lions and tigers and bears, oh my, if all these dangers are around you, then it's actually dangerous for you to be in a very long REM cycle. So to contrast that, when you are an NREM, non-rapid eye movement, your body can move. This is why you can kind of scratch your back and move your arms around and kind of stretch and kind of adjust, adjust yourself and crack your neck maybe, whatever. You can actually move around in an REM, but you're not dreaming. You're pretty much, your mind is in shutdown mode, but your body can move and react to external stimuli more easily so that if there was a, a danger around the corner, you could quickly react, get up and run. And so that's why most of your sleep is NREM. Now, what does all this have to do with, what, what's the reason behind this? There's one more thing I wanna put out there, which is step number four, or a reason number four, which is we dream to create a self. So Fred Allen Wolf wrote a book, he's a, he's a physicist, PhD, and he wrote a book called The Dreaming Universe. And his whole theory behind this is that, look, we take a look at one, two, and three, but what exactly is happening over here? We're integrating data, we're erasing certain data that doesn't relate to us. We have these long periods of rapid eye movement. Well, these not long, but multitudinous. There's a lot of them when we're babies. And they, tend, they tend to lessen as we grow older. And his whole theory is that as we're developing, we're actually taking in so much data that we are actually trying to figure out what relates to us and what doesn't. And so in his ideas, in, in his theory, we actually, we dream, we do all the stuff here just to create a sense of identity. And so I'm gonna stop right over here, but in the next video, I'm gonna talk more about identity. I'm gonna talk more about the theory of self because how exactly does the self come into being? Where does the self originate? Where does the psyche, where, where is consciousness? Where does it stand within the psyche? And uh, you're about to realize that there's a lot more going on up there than uh, what you give credit for. And I just, I wanna just, pull back the curtains and give you a deeper understanding of human psychology and human nature so that you yourself can become the best version of yourself consciously. All right, if you like this video, please hit like, share, subscribe. If you go to unfoldingdestiny.com, you can download the free Rules of Legacy poster, which basically makes a framework of everything that I believe in. All right, thank you so much and it's been a pleasure. Have a great one.